Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I've ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My mouth derides my enemies, because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. The barren has born seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God our Savior. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain made low. The Old Testament reading today comes from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Behold, your King is coming to you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The epistle reading for today comes from Hebrews chapter 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have, have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite our Director of Christian Education, Mr. Dirk Ford, and any children present at this time to come forward for our children's message portion of our service. Morning, buddy. Oh, good morning, guys. Mm. All right. I stole a couple of things from my son today and yesterday. What do I have up here? What are these things? Toy cars. What, all right, so what is this one? Fire truck, right? What is this one? Police car, right? And then finally we've got helicopter. And this is really fun. Ooh. Bins. Right, all right. 
So if I were to turn all these on, I have them turned off right now because randomly like they like to make noise. And so we'd be in the middle of like doing search and they'd start to talk. And we'd be worried there was a demon in here. But instead it'd be these toys. But when we're talking about toys and police cars and fire trucks, how do we know those are coming? How do we know there's a fire truck coming? Yeah, there's sirens, right? They're up here, usually up top. And what else? We hear the noise, and we also, what? Yeah, see the light, right? Especially at night. It makes it really easy to see up. And then the police officers, right, they have their sirens and their lights and everything. Sometimes we see helicopters, right? There have been a couple times in the back part of a parking lot, helicopters have actually landed and shattered a pool and cracked it up, which is kind of crazy because the helicopter landing in the pool is like a big deal. So we've got all of these things that have lights, and you can hear them coming. Usually it means help is on the way, right? If we hear a fire truck coming, we know someone probably has a fire that's going on and that they need help. Or maybe there was an accident and they need some um, an ambulance or paramedics. If there's a police car siren going off, maybe someone needs help. There was a car accident. Maybe someone's spouse is getting broken into. We have to get them out. Because people from need some help. Right? So we see all of these things, and then I have back here Christmas stuff, right? You guys all put up your Christmas stuff? Is it all up? Is it all ready to go, all the lights lit and everything? No. <laughs> That's okay. Still got time. So we got all of our lights that are up and everything, and they let us know something else is coming. A different type of help is on the way. Jesus is on the way. Christmas, yes, where we celebrate Jesus' birth. Help is on the way. We know and we need Jesus, right? He's coming back. On his birth, well, his big birthday, where we celebrate when he came into the world, and what did he do for us? What help did he give us? What else? What help did Jesus give us on Christmas? No, you're not gonna. Come on. Oh, he died on the cross for you, for me. He came and died and rose so that you guys. why he came. Say exactly. Help was on the way. We had the angels that were announcing with their bright lights and their colors and they're showing they came to the shepherd. They came to Mary. Mary came to Elizabeth and even John was showing. Jesus was on the way. Help was on the way. Here, do it. Hold on to that for a second. Give it to me. Help was on the way. And we celebrate we celebrate Advent still today. We celebrate Christmas with all of our lights and all of our singing. But help is still on the way. We still need Jesus. We can't get to heaven by ourselves. We still need his love, his forgiveness, and his mercy. And him coming again. We get to be in the world. So, as we go through Christmas and we see the light, just remember, help is on the way. Can you guys pray with me? Let's go talk to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all of our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, our nurses, and our doctors who all remind us help is on the way. We thank you for sending your son who on Christmas came so that we may live. And we know, Lord, help is on the way. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let me get a drink.
God our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Next for our gospel proclamation comes from the Old Testament prophecy of Micah that Mike Yerk very lovingly filled in for me. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that at the last second. And serves as the basis of our theme for this fourth and final Sunday of Advent. Sinners humbly acknowledge him. But you, O oh Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are too little to be amongst the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days. Boy, I have to tell you, being the little guy is rough in our world. I mean, they always get picked last for flag football and kickball games. They're sneered at on the football field. People make short people jokes about them. No one expects much or asks for much from them because they're just plain little. Now, this can also equally apply to the odd people, the awkward people, the people that may be in the minority culture in the bigger group. They're just plain quiet. They're not average, so they are innocently enough, but quite organically, marginalized by most everyone. But oh, how, how many tales are there about that little, odd, awkward, quiet, minority individual that rises to great heights to accomplish amazing feats that tales of their heroics all start with these humble beginnings. So begins today's lesson in tiny Bethlehem of Ephrathah. I mean, it just doesn't get any humbler than this. And even though we know that the king of the universe was born here, it remains a humble little village to this day. So how can so much from come from so little? Well, the secret lies in that humility always destroys evil might. You've heard me say it so many times before. Might makes right in a lot of people's minds. We all know that isn't true, but it does seem to be the path of least resistance for the most of the powerful elitists these days. Do as I say, because I will make you if you don't. And if I can make you, it's because I have the authority to. And if I have the authority to make you do what you don't want you to do, then I have the power, and if I have the power, well, then that must mean I'm right. I know. Poor logic. But that does seem to be the go-to mantra these days with unethical leadership. Unfortunately for them, they misunderstand the power of humility. Usually, when leadership is this corrupt, it is also reserved precariously for just a few elites over the vast majority. But the vast majority can quickly become unmanageable when they realize that evil might only has the power the humble can sense to. For example, if a bully came up to a group of kids and demanded their lunch money, he can only get that money if the entire group consents to giving it. Even so, if just one says no, then he must use his power to take it, but also knows he may be facing more who are quickly doing the math that there's only one bully and there's dozens of us lunch people. Then it only takes one more to rally the group to lock arms in resistance to the bully, and the bully's task becomes impossible to accomplish as he skulks off the playground to find less able children to manipulate psychologically. The humble, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, far outweigh the evil mighty one. Frequently they just don't know it. So God shows us today through humble Bethlehem that he works through humble means to defeat evil might. One of my Favorite little girls, because I've been teaching and working here and 
pastoring here at Faith Christian Church, played basketball at the school a few years ago. And one of the reasons I just adored her is because she was so little. I mean, really little. She would literally come out on the basketball court, and their name would announce her to be playing, and people would start laughing out loud when she was announced as one of the players. Now, we all know what the laughs and the giggles indicated, and it was nothing more than, you know, what I said before, the, the always getting kicked last at the flag football or kickball, sneering at them on the football field, people making short jokes about them. No one expects much from them or asks much of them because she's just so plain little. So you can imagine in their minds when they were laughing at her, how can this tiny little girl make any meaningful impact in the game that thrives with taller than average people players? Just this week, Anne reminded me that after her first game, when everybody laughed at her, she was announced as a starter every game thereafter. And it was because their home fans were truly behind her all the way, cheering riotously every time she stole the ball. Every time she shot a basket, every time she even dribbled the ball down the court, because she could do no wrong in their eyes, and her level of play rose to the level of their praise every game. I'll never forget my own father sitting next to me in the bleachers and yelling, believe it or not, even louder than I could, way to go, Gracie! And she would beam with pride every time he did. Little humble Gracie became great Gracie with her fan base locking arms firmly behind her every time she faced her giant opponent. And honestly, those bigger girls didn't know how to handle it. I mean, she would run circles around them looking for opportunities to swat the ball away. And if they disregarded her diminutive size for even a moment, that was when they paid for it. Because as soon as they thought they had outran, outjumped, or outdribbled her, she would come right back at them and take advantage of their carelessness, never guessing she was coming again. This is exactly how our Father in Heaven dealt with the devil. In humble terms, that even Satan couldn't understand. If Jesus was prophesied to be born in a little town, well, Satan could simply dispatch the soldiers to kill dozens of boys in that little town and eliminate Jesus right then and there with the evil one. But after being warned by an angel, Mary and Joseph humbly escaped to Egypt, lived humbly where they could not be found until the demon-possessed Herod passed on and Archelaus took the throne, and then outside of his reach, humble Galilee would be Jesus' home where they had no authority. Now, I don't know how hard Satan searched for him. Believe it or not, pastors don't spend a ton of time studying Satan. That should comfort you. But I can just imagine that if he was looking for the most Messiah, it would certainly, in his mind, be in the halls of power and not the shed of a carpet. Certainly, to Satan, a Messiah would be regarded by kings, not surrounded by and to Satan, the Messiah would live in palaces and sit on thrones, not walk the earth with no place to rest his head or even call home. So the devil would have to wait until Jesus came onto his church amongst the Judeans who wanted Christ dead. Oh, you would think that the humble masses that far outnumbered the Roman soldiers and the temple guards would have locked their arms in front of their beloved rabbi Jesus to save them. But just like we do with sin every day, they consented to Satan's bullying, and they even cheered for Jesus' demise by the Pharisees and Sadducees who encouraged him. Yeah, Satan planned it perfectly. The Messiah was supposed to die just like he wanted all along. The only problem for Satan is he didn't realize this was the Heavenly Father's plan all along. 
For Jesus came to Jerusalem not to rule like the unethical leaders in the palace and the temple. No, he came to take a throne all of his own. And it was the kind of throne almost nobody would understand as a place of power and dominion and authority. Rather, the most abject humility. But you, all Bethlehem and Ephrathah, who are too little, this king, this throne could never be mistaken for a great throne. Rather, only an implement of destruction for the most disregarded nothings of society had to offer so they could be disposed of and done away with right there for good and then cast into a robber grave never to be considered again. But Satan didn't consider this one truth. Humility is always greater than evil time. For that cross, as the ultimate weapon of humility, is exactly what took Satan's might. For the cross was the means by which Christ Jesus would take our humble just desserts away from us and then eat them on the cross for us. And when he swallowed up the consequence of our sin, he proved to the world that we no longer had to consent to Satan's bullying anymore. And he walked out of the tomb, risen from the dead, to prove it. You know, they say Advent is a little humble, and I believe that's true. After all, we celebrate the anticipating of the birth of our Lord, who had to come in order to die for our sin. We also rejoice because he's coming again to take us where there can be no more sin. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we didn't earn it. We certainly don't deserve it. And in our arrogance, we couldn't even see our need for it. So Jesus came to us humbly, giving us the only way we could understand our need from him by the Holy Spirit humble opening of our eyes to the prophecy of that little town in Bethlehem. One foretold in the Garden of Eden is coming, and he shall stand as a shepherd of his flock, as Yahweh in our midst, and we will dwell securely in him. In the majesty of his name, Jesus our God, born to die and rise from the dead, for sinners who humbly acknowledge his salvation for them. Amen. Now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Amen. We continue with the offertory song. Elder on duty, please be kind enough to record the offertory.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, mighty God, there is none like you in holiness, constancy, and might. Yet, you exercise your power for the salvation of sinners. As we draw near to the celebration of Jesus' birth, fill our hearts with gratitude that your Son humbled himself and became flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, Bethlehem was too small to be among the clans of Judah, yet from it came forth the King of Kings. Remember the congregations of your people where numbers are small and resources are scarce. Provide for their needs and remind them that the Lord of Lords dwells among them in his means of grace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, you make poor and you make rich. Receive our thanks for your gifts of daily bread. Give us contentment with what you provide. Preserve us from coveting what you do not give, and grant that we would be wise stewards of your blessing. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, you sent your Son to shepherd his flock in strength and to be great to the ends of the earth. Grant wisdom to our leaders and peace among the nations, that we may dwell secure. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, you helped your servant Israel, and your mercy endures forever. Look upon those brought low by illness, injury, grief, or other affliction, especially the Shaw family, Bill, Tim, Robert, Landon, Jenny, Janet, Norma, Richard, Nancy, Lil, Teresa, Craig, and Jerry. Have mercy upon them, grant them healing and strength, and maintain in them the certain hope of your faithfulness to them for Jesus' sake. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, you have sanctified us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ once for all on the cross. Prepare the hearts of all who commune this day with penitence and trust in your promises. And so make us holy with your Son's body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, mighty God, you have done great things for us, most of all delivering us from death to life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mercifully hear our prayers and answer them according to your will for the sake of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please rise for the service of the sacraments and the preface for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, who is the one that came and promised the Messiah, the very Lamb of God, through his servant John the Baptist who takes away the sin of the world and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape the wrath to be revealed when he comes again with glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in the remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do, as often as you drink it, in the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen.
all give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
take your seats for just a few of these announcements, and I'll get you on to your Christmas preparations and ready to go. So um, if you're planning to come to church on Christmas Eve, right, Friday at 7 p.m., what time do you want to get here, faith people? 6 p.m. <laughs> there will be no seats. I know, Miles. I know. It's been a long service, brother. I agree. <laughs> So, yes, there will be no seats available at 7. I promise you it's going to be a packed house in here. Um, so, obviously, we love our et cetera Christians. You know, Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas only Christians. We love them. You know what I mean? We want them to be here. We want them to be a part of us and amongst us. So, we are definitely going to do our best to make room for them. But if you want a comfortable seat in the normal pew, just make sure you get here early for it. Uh, seating will be much more accommodating at the 11 o'clock service, and that's the service for Christmas communion. So, uh, make your plans accordingly. Be ready for that. Christmas Day is the next day at 10 a.m. Lessons and Carols is a series of very, 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 very brief devotions going to Christmas songs and no sermon at all. So look forward to that one, right? That'll be a lot of fun, right? Um, and then what's the next? <laughs> I'm just clapping a little too enthusiastically. <laughs> all right. So and what's on Sunday? First Sunday after Christmas. Sneaks right up on us, doesn't it? So we'll have regular church services, regular breakfast in the morning, regular Bible study. No Sunday school, no Sunday school, but we will have regular breakfast. Any of the kids who want to come with their parents, I would love to have you in my Bible study. We'll have lots of fun together, I promise. Uh, but no regular Sunday school classes. We'll do breakfast, Bible study, and church at 10 a.m. like normal. And then for my new members, we will have new member instruction after church as well. Make sure we're keeping you guys on track to be confirmed in just a couple of weeks, okay? Um, first time guests and visitors, I would love to welcome you if you've never joined us before with a little token of my appreciation, our appreciation, I should say, for you coming and joining us today by greeting us now. Now, if you don't want to stand up in front of the strange group of people and tell us your name, that's completely fine. You just find that handsome gentleman with the gray coat and the red shirt. There you go, Michael. He will give you the gift anyway. We're just glad you came. But if you don't mind greeting us now, we would love to greet you. And I'm going to do this backwards this time. I'm going to go this way. Hello, everybody here. Any first-time guests and visitors on my left here? No? 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 I, well, I know Paul and Sandy are back. Everybody say hi to Paul and Sandy. Haven't seen them forever. Welcome back, guys. Are, now, are you living in Michigan now or out on the coast? Michigan. You aren't. Why? It is so cold up there. Why? <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, good to have you guys back. Always a joy to see you. Any first-time guests and visitors in this section here? Wonderful. Where are you guys visiting us from? Minnesota. Yes. I love it. Okay, so what part of Minnesota are you in? Where? Okay, well, we all know nobody really lives in Minneapolis. So where do you really live? Bloomington. That's where I live. 108th. Uh, no, no, where, where did I live, babe? 76 Vincent Avenue, right by Hillcrest Elementary. I used to walk to Hillcrest Elementary in minus 30 degree weather. Yeah, oh, it's glorious. I had the best down code. It was great. It was awesome. I it was sledding all the time. Wore my long johns with my felt lined blue jeans. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. So you guys are welcome. Oh, what, but, oh yeah, of course, I, I forget. I forget. Welcome to America. It's nice to have you with us. <laughs> but your city is in our prayers, of course. We know that's just a real mess up there. But I have fond memories of Minnesota swimming up and down the creek and hanging out at Bush Lake and. Good times, good times. I love it. I love it. Caught a lot of sunfish at that lake. <laughs> Welcome. And tell me your first name, my dear. Judy? Judy and Mike. Everybody make sure you make Judy and Mike our Minnesotans from Bloomington, Minnesota. Welcome, okay? Wonderful. Nice to have you, Judy. Nice to have you. Did I miss anybody in my haste to get to my fellow Minnesotans? Did I miss anyone? Okay, over here, first time guests and visitors. Wonderful. And where are you visiting from, my dear? Wisconsin. Oh, you guys just beat us in volleyball last night. I'm not happy with the Badgers. Not happy with the Badgers, but they were good. They were really, really good. Don't get me wrong. They were good. They were awesome. They're awesome. They're absolutely awesome. And tell me your first name, dear. Sandy and Wayne. Nice to meet you guys. It's so nice to have you with us. And what part of Wisconsin? Oh, okay. All right. So just outside of Milwaukee. Outstanding. Very good. Well, welcome, guys. Nice to have you with us. All right. Did I miss anybody else? Am I here to get over here at Sandy and Wayne? No, no, no. Okay. All right. Uh, so you got the lay of the land for this week for Christmas services, so you kind of know what's going on. Uh, just be prepared for that. Um, um, I'm going to be running all over the place this week. Our, our wonderful cookie pack ladies made cookie packs just for our shut-ins. 
So I'll be delivering those all week. So to me, me, the only way to get a hold of you this week is probably by my mobile phone. Um, if you want some time with this week, you can sit down and chat. chat. It's just not happening. <laughs> this is the busiest week of the year for me with a variety of different things I'm committed to doing to get ready for Christmas. So if you can just wait till the week after New Year's, that would really be helpful. I promise I'll get back to you, and I promise I'll be working with you on all of your pastoral care needs. But this week, it's virtually impossible. And obviously, if you're going to the hospital, I will be there. That's not, not the issue. But uh, just be aware uh, that I'm going to be all over the place. If you need to find me, the best way to get a hold of me is directly by my mobile number. If you don't know what that is, just give me a call to my church leader, and I can get you a hold of me and make sure that I get in contact with you. Other than that, let's see here. Cookie packs are available in the social hall. So if you ordered your cookie pack, go pick it up. Make sure you grab it. Do we have any extra purchase that we're not ordering? Any extra? Four extras for purchase. Four boxes are left for purchase. If you wanted to purchase one, have not pre-ordered. But if you pre-ordered, yours are waiting for you. They're reserved for you. Just please make sure you pick those up at the social hall. They look delicious. I got mine last night. I'm super excited to eat those in the morning. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot more running that week. <laughs> Put on the old uh, uh, form-fitting suit, and boy, was it formed. <laughs> a little tight this year. <laughs> Very good. Any other announcements to the church to the congregation that may be neglecting? New members, I'll see you in the social hall in about 10 minutes. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.